Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about proofing, specifically some tips that I think will be useful to those folks who work in pre-press to make your proofs a little bit more realistic to your customers. In front of me I have a folder and I have a subfolder here called proofing tools and these are all a collection of either PDF or JPEG images that are going to help us to create a more realistic looking proof for our customers. They include things like a uh, eight bank tab template. So this can be a, a job for a binder. Maybe the customer sends you a PDF and they already have these, these uh, uh, tabs typeset. When you drop this into InDesign and place in the PDF, you can immediately see whether the tabs that they sent you are going to fit your actual tab template here. Um, and it'll allow you to catch mistakes before they even become mistakes. Another good example is a door hanger. You have this uh, cutout area here and this slit for your door hanger. Maybe your customer has sent you a, a PDF and they have a picture here. And maybe the person's head is right in this area where the punch out is going to occur. If you put this die line into the PDF that they sent you, then visually they can see the problem and either you, you, know, you can make the mistake or your customer has to, to uh, fix the mistake. Doing proofs this way is great for catching problems with artwork as far as placement goes. Um, I would run into it a lot of times here on a window uh, for an envelope. You would have customers send you a logo with an address and then maybe they have some kind of tagline down here and it would fall right into the area where the window patch is going to be. Visually now you can send this PDF off to your customer and you can show them, hey look, you know this um, artwork is not going to work because it falls right into where the window patch is. It's cheap to do it that way because all it basically takes is a few minutes of your time to set up your template, make a PDF, email it to the customer, and now, now they have a visual representation of what the actual printed piece is going to look like without actually having to print the job and see where the problem might occur. I run into it with things like a YRO book where maybe some of the... Um, text is too close to the edge and it's going to fall into the area where the punch out occurs. Same thing with a uh, three hole punch. I have this one here for a three hole punch template. Often I see somebody that they've set up maybe a graph or something like that and there's a big chunk of it that falls right underneath where the hole punch is going to be and by sending this to your customer you can they can visually see oh I have to move my artwork you know, over to the right to compensate for where that hole punch pattern is. So these are, for me anyway, these are essential tools when I send proofs. They're obviously not tools, you know, like physical tools, but they these PDFs are uh, really essential to setting up your proof properly to show your customer that better representation of how their item is going to look. I would recommend to anybody who works in prepress to build out some kind of library similar to this where you have these types of things that are going to be um, essential when you send over to your um, your proofs over to your customers. And so now I figured I'd show you exactly how I implement those, those uh, uh, tools into a proof. So I have here a little 5 by 7 card that is going to be a greeting card and it says Merry Christmas in here and the way I've set this up is I've created three layers in my InDesign document. I have a proof layer, a foil layer, and a print layer. So if I turn the proof and foil layer off you can see the print layer itself is what I'm going to send over to my press. This is print ready send it over there and then do my imposition on the press boom make, make uh, do my prints I then have a layer for the actual foil 
So let's say this is something that you're going to send out to a third party to be foil stamped, or maybe we're, we are going to use this on a, uh, a foiling machine of some kind, and the foiling machine just needs the foil pattern itself. This is the file that we're going to send over to the um, foiling machine. Um, and each one of these are obviously going to be a different PDF that you're going to set up. The last step is to create your proof layer. And in this case, what I've done is I have a, uh, if I hit my W key here, I have a frame that has a magenta border around the outside that basically represents the die cut of this, this you know, whatever this scallop shape is, this little bubble shape around the outside. And then I've taken this same photo that's on the print layer and dropped it into that frame. So it's going to clip out anywhere along the outside um, to give a better representation to the customer of how the actual shape of the card is going to look. I also have taken the Merry Christmas here and I've outlined the fonts and I've dropped in a foil pattern which I have here. This is a little gold foil pattern. So this file here I've dropped into the frame for Mary and for Christmas so that it shows more of how an actual gold foil stamp is going to look like. I could have left it just with this foil layer like this by itself. Um, however, I feel that doing it this way gives the customer a better look as to how the actual printed card is, is going to visually look. Um, it's only a simple, it's, you know, a small, simple step there. But in my opinion, that creates a better proof for them. And it also allows something like, um, let's say they look at it and they say, you know what, I don't really like that gold. I want maybe a silver or something like that. So you can go in here and I can change this. I have my direct selection tool and, and I've deleted the gold foil pattern. And now if I come in here and I go up to a place I'm going to put in let's say a red foil pattern instead and so now I can send this to the customer and say hey what do you think about a red foil instead and maybe they're like well you know let's stick with the gold foil or let's make it silver or whatever the case is this gives them just a better representation of how the actual card is going to look and in my opinion that's uh important to the customer. It also is che uh, cheaper because you don't have to go through the whole process of doing an actual printed copy, foiling the thing and then die cutting the whole thing and then showing it to the customer and they look at it and go, eh, I don't really like how it looks. This way you just send a soft PDF proof and a lot of the mistakes, a lot of the uh, issues that are going to crop up are going to be taken care of in the proofing process without actually making an actual print. So that's uh, one way for a, a greeting card there. Uh, let's say I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new file here. Create an envelope size. So this is a number 10, so a 9.5 by 4 and 1 eighth. And I'm going to drop in my um, PDF that the customer has given me. And they say, okay, this is going to go onto a number 10 window envelope. So I could send them this. And they could look at it and go, oh, everything looks fine, right? But if I drop in my template here for my window measurement and center this up, obviously you can see there's going to be some issues because the artwork is going to fall right into the area where the window patch is. So now I can send this to my customer and say, hey, look, you know, obviously you're going to have to make some modifications to your artwork or we can make some modifications to your artwork to make it fit better whether it's just you know uh, moving up everything in the PDF or maybe uh, reshaping this background to only show up here on the right hand side whatever the case is but through the soft PDF proofing uh, step you catch any of those mistakes before you actually send it off to press so I know some of this uh, some of these concepts seem fairly uh, simple but You'd be surprised how many times a 
even a free press um, operator doesn't catch things like that. And then it becomes a process when it's actually been printed, been sent out to uh, the finishing department, it's already been cut, and maybe now it's getting die cut. And then all, all of a sudden the person doing the die cutting looks at the job and says, hey, like this person's head is going to get cut off in the die, um, you know, the, the way the die is set up, and nobody even caught this. Uh, and by then it's obviously too late. You've already gone through the whole process. Um, I have one here for a table tent. This gives a, a good representation of where the fold lines are going to be. And I have a layer here just called fold marks. So this artwork layer is what I'm going to send off to the, uh, to the press to actually get printed. But if I check and uncheck these fold marks, you'll see that those magenta lines there disappear and when I send the proof to the customer they can see exactly where the fold is going to occur. Something like this a lot of times you'll have customers who just request that they get scored they don't actually get folded so this will show the customer exactly where those score marks are going to be. I also have this little remove um, adhesive strip over here this is going to be a table tent, so these are going to fold up, and then this um, little tab here is going to tuck underneath the um, panel over here, and then that's going to create your table tent for the um, to sit on the on the table at the restaurant. So by doing those things, uh, the customer can also see where the tape is going to be applied. Maybe for whatever reason there was a misinterpretation, and this tape should actually be on this side and these items should be pushed over to the right. All of those little problems can be alleviated in the proofing process if you set up your proof properly this way. A lot of times I just see a proof that's sent out that looks just like this. And say, and somebody says, you know, here's the proof. And they go, somebody will look at it and go, oh yeah, it looks fine. In reality, maybe those fold marks are actually going to fall right here, right through the middle where this burger menu text is. Unfortunately, the customer is already committed at that point. They've approved the job. You've passed off this job to your printing department. It's been printed. It gets over to the finishing department, and then they go, uh, hey, there's a problem. The fold is going to be in a totally wrong spot. So the kind of the negligence in the pre-press department has now created a problem for not only your customer, but for, you know, what are you going to do now with all those printed sheets that are basically no good anymore? So by doing proofs uh, a little bit more thoroughly, you can eliminate some of those mistakes. I have one here for a little tag as well. This shows some rounded corners. It has a little hole punch at the top. And I've set this up in the same way here, where I have the hole punch pattern here at the top. I have a proof layer that shows the rounded corners. And then I have a actual print layer that I'm actually going to send this over to my press to be printed. Doing it this way allows you to use the same file for both proofing and for printing. But it also allows that visually more accurate look to the actual proof that you're going to send to your customer. So that's pretty much it. Um, I just figured I'd share some of those tips with you that kind of makes things a little bit more thorough. Uh, I know this one, this video was not really a lot about discovery. It was more just kind of talking some theories of, you know, about how to send good proofs. But I feel like it's an important step in uh, pre-press that shouldn't get overlooked. Um, if you have any questions about how I created this uh, library of all these different PDFs and in fact I think what I'll do is um, at some point I'll put this up on my patreon page so if you are interested in purchasing all of these things I'll just leave them up there in a folder and you can purchase the whole set for you know five bucks or whatever um, I do think even uh, even if you don't purchase it just if you start building out a library for yourself it's a very important step especially if you're doing a lot of proofs, if you work in pre-press departments, it's a, a very important part of the whole printing uh, process. 
If anybody wants to see anything in a little bit more detail, please leave it down in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer any questions, happy to show a little bit more, um, something a little bit further in a future video. Um, I do appreciate some of the folks that have reached out and given a super thanks in the last few days. Uh, it just gives me motivation to keep doing these videos. It obviously means that I'm not just sitting here talking and nobody's listening. People are actually watching the videos and getting some good use out of them. So I do very, very much appreciate that. Anybody who even just subscribes is a great way to support the channel. If you want to support it a little bit further, again, you can check me out on Patreon. Um, purchase any of the items that I have for sale over there or become a um, Patreon member. It'll go a long way to helping the channel out. As always, please just leave a uh, 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 thumbs up. Share the video if you can. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you have a question, just leave it down in the comment section below. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching, folks. And until the next time, take it easy.